Morena, welcome to church today. Kia ora, ni hao, huan ying. Bonjour et bienvenue. Welcome to St. Matthew's. Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew in the city. Hi, welcome to church today. Welcome to St. Matthew in the city. Welcome to St. Matthew's in the city. Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's in the city. Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew in the city. Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's. No mai haere mai, ki te whanau atikaraiti. Here we are again, gathering for worship via the wonderful means of technology. I know we're all a bit frustrated to be back in lockdown, but uh, we will manage nonetheless. We're filming this on the morning of Friday, the 14th of August, so we don't know yet if our lockdown will continue. But for the meantime, we are gathered together uh, for Sunday morning. And so whatever, we, whatever Sunday morning has brought to us, let us take this time just to be quiet and to focus on God. Maybe these words of Jesus can help us. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. Be with us, Spirit of God, for nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God, and fill us with your loving presence. Speak in us, wisdom of God, and bring strength and healing and peace. God of our days and years, we set this time apart to be still. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may reflect you. Amen. Your blessing, O God, be upon us, and let all the ends of the world revere you. Holy God, whose name is not honoured when the stranger is not welcomed, may we embrace stranger and neighbour with the same tenderness, so your justice may be fulfilled in love. Amen.
The Gospel reading set down for today does not really fit into the category of that verse that I opened our service with, Jesus being gentle and humble, which I think is our idealised picture of Jesus, the comforting Jesus. That's a bit shattered by this reading that I'm about to share with you. It's from Matthew chapter 15. Jesus left and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is being tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. We've just finished watching the Netflix series Stateless. It's an Australian production about the internment of asylum seekers in Australia. And the writers show in a gradual and very clever way how everyone whether a guard or an immigration official or the would-be immigrants, all fall into the trap of seeing everyone else as the other. The system forces them into, into a great distrust of each other and then eventually to hatred and violence. They struggle to see each other as fellow humans sharing a common humanity in community. This reading from Matthew's Gospel is about how we see people different from ourselves as the other and how even Jesus falls into that trap. It's puzzling though, why does the Gospel writer Matthew include this story about Jesus and the Canaanite woman in his Gospel? Because it shows both Jesus and the disciples in a fairly bad light. He could have just chosen not to include it. This woman, this Gentile woman, a complete outsider, dares to approach the master and his followers and calls and cries out. She sounds to them like the demon who is said to torment her daughter. Send her away, for goodness sake. Let us get on with being the disciples of the master who is going to overthrow the Romans and bring about God's kingdom, which will be, by the way, exclusively for our people. And yes, even Jesus is arrogant and rude. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I will not take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Hang on a minute. Has the Jesus of the Gospels that we know been replaced in the story? Where is the Jesus who says, oh, let the little children come to me? Where is Jesus who saves the woman in adultery, caught in adultery from being stoned? Where is the Jesus who says, I'm gentle and humble? Why would Matthew, the gospel writer, include this story? John and Luke don't. Mark does, but it's in a slightly kinder version than this. But Matthew does not flinch as he shows Jesus to be rude and prejudiced and even maybe racist. Now, if me calling Jesus a racist makes you flinch, I'm sorry, but Jesus calls the woman a dog, a derogatory term used by the people of his time for the Gentiles, those who were different from them. And in Jesus' defense, he is fitting into the norms of his time here he's actually being quite normal for his time. He's not being the radical. But the woman, 
this feisty, unnamed woman from Canaan, replies in a very quick and witty way, Yes, but even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She's not actually asking to even sit at the table of the master. She knows her place. But she does want healing for her daughter, and she's not about to give up. And she knows there is enough to go around. Maybe she's heard the story of the feeding of the 5,000. There were 12 baskets of crumbs left over then. Cannot Jesus share a few crumbs, take a moment out of his precious, busy schedule to attend to the needs of her daughter? Well, Jesus has met his match and his mind is changed and he commends her faith and the girl is healed. This woman is the one who shows Jesus the error of his ways. The human, ordinary Jesus is rebuked and corrected. Had he forgotten the words of the prophet Isaiah, I will bring the foreigners to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The foreigner herself sees that these words are fulfilled. So Matthew includes his story of the Canaanite woman in his gospel because in the life of the early church, one of the most important questions they had to deal with was the question of membership. Who was the church for? Who could belong? Was it for the foreigners as well as the Jews? Was it for the Gentiles? Did they have to follow the food rules? Matthew includes this account in his gospel to shock his readers into realizing that even Jesus and his disciples were, once upon a time, in the mold of excluding the other. But no more. Gentiles are in, and so all are in. And I think Matthew also includes the story because if we see Jesus and the disciples failing and then facing their failure and overcoming their distrust and hatred of the other, then we can too. Maybe we can just have the courage to own up to our own racism, our own rejections of people, if we see that Jesus and the disciples have been there too. Maybe we can have the courage to face up to our own feelings of rejection, our own actions of rejection. How might this play out in our, in our own lives? Who in our lives do we see as the other? Is it the person at work who annoys us every single day? Is it our children demanding our attention? Is it the spouse we are separated from, but whom we still treat with animosity? Is it someone from another ethnic group or religion? Is it a politician on the campaign trail? Is it someone with COVID? Paying attention to those others, listening to them is the very thing which will liberate us from our animosity and our exclusiveness. No longer looking at them as the other, but as the one who belongs, will in turn liberate us and allow us to be closer to God's intention for our lives. And even Jesus has been there. He has been impatient and uncaring and rude. And then he listened. He listened when a woman, the other, the unwanted, spoke truth and justice to him. So Matthew brings us this story so that we might listen to those we label as other.
as we return to our separated lockdown state, hear these words of Jesus to the Canaanite woman. Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And so now we pray. E te atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki a mātou, te hungi a mātou, mana ki te a mātou. Ho mai ki a mātou tō maramatanga i tēnei rā. God of love, hear our prayer. Bless us, keep us, and give us your wisdom for today. And when I say e te atua aroha, will you say, whakarongo mai ki a mātou. E te atua aroha, whakarongo mai kia mātou. Yes, hear us and give us your wisdom, O God. Give us the confidence to endure this new time of trial. Give us the courage to trust those who make decisions on our behalf. Give us the faith to reach out to the unloved, the unwanted, the unseen. Help us to see others as we would like to be seen. E te atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki a Let us pray for the church throughout the world, for all bishops, priests, deacons and lay leaders. For our clergy, Helen and Kate, Linda and Wilf and our parish staff. For our rainbow community at St Matthew in the city and for all who are joined with us from around the motu and around the world. So that together, united in heart and spirit, and rejecting all exclusion, we can seek the common ground, e te atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki a Let us pray for the world, for our fragile planet, our only home, for those who work to preserve and protect it, for wisdom for the world's leaders, especially at this time of global crisis, for our Prime Minister and our government, for all those standing for political office in the coming election, for those seeking justice, climate justice, racial justice, social justice for people of all faiths and goodwill everywhere, so that together, united in heart and spirit, and embracing the oneness of humanity and the wholeness of creation, we can stand tall together. E te atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki a Let us pray for those people known and unknown to us who are suffering in any way, in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are sick and we name them in our hearts or out loud now. We pray for those who are dying, for those who wait with them. We pray for those who have died. We pray for a cure to the virus that stalks the earth. E te atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki a mātou. Let us pray in silence for our own needs. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, O God of love, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. I ngā wā o te pōri, o te marama, o te raru, o te hari. Afinātia mai mato e te atua aroha. Kia manako kito aroha, kia mahi iau mahi, 
kia whakapai i tō ingoa. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. Kua kona nei tātou e tō tātou ariki, kā i noi tātou. E tō mātou mātou i te rangi, ki a tapu tō inga wā, ki a tai mai tō ranga tira tanga, ki a mea te tau e pai ai ki ronga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi. O mai ki a mātou ai ane, he taro ma mātou mo tēnei rā, mūrua o mātou hara, me mātou hoki e muru nei, i o te honga e hara ana ki a mātou. Aua hoki mātou e kāwea ki a whakawaia, engari whakorangi a mātou i te kino. Nau hoki te ranga tira tanga, te kaha, me te karoria. Ake, ake, ake. Āmine. So thank you for joining us at our worship today. Uh, I imagine that we're probably going to be coming back to you in video form next Sunday, so keep an eye on our website and our Facebook uh, for that information. But for now, may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus, and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life, be with you now and always. Amen. Go now, for the Spirit of God is alive in the land. Amen. We go in the power of love.